Alright, hopefully our bandwidth will work and this will we'll keep it nice and short there. Oh, it's recording already. Yeah. Hello everyone, Lee Blackhall here for the uh, Teachers of Health Professionals community. We have a latecomer uh, <laughs> to the session, Anne Williams, who teaches in occupational therapy, has submitted a text. Um, I think it was to the panel uh, Web Integrated Learning, yes? Yes. And, uh, and what subject have you been teaching? And I think you've been using PebblePad, uh, which is a Latrobe kind of e-portfolio system plus evidence folio system um, here. And uh, and tell us about that and the subject you've been teaching and, and how you've been using that particular tool. Yes. So the subject's a third year subject in uh, our double degree, which is a Bachelor of Health Sciences and a Master of Occupational Therapy practice. So we have two cohorts of students really, uh, students who are doing the four year program yeah. at the double degree and we also have graduates who have a completed degree elsewhere who come in for the two year program, okay. the Master of Occupational Therapy practice. Okay. And in addition to that we have students on our Bundura campus here and also in Bendigo. Okay. So it's a diverse cohort, I guess that's one of the issues of people of different ages, different educational, prior educational experiences, mm -hmm. and we are trying to teach it across the two campuses. So the subject that I particularly coordinate in that year is called Enabling Change in Human Occupation. Okay. It's a 15 uh, credit point. It's a 30 some, credit point 30, subject. 30 credit points. So yeah. um, those who aren't in the university sector so much. That's about uh, 300 hours in a semester or 300 hours of study in um, approximately four months or five months. I can't remember how long a semester goes for. Yes, yeah. we, we have a very um, unusual curriculum here too because because it is in, the students are gaining a master's qualification, a master's level qualification in four years. Mm -hmm. It's accelerated, so mm -hmm. the, the, they actually start studying in our third year in the beginning of February. Yeah. And they're just finishing next week is their last week. Okay. So it's a, it's a longer year, that, and they don't have the long semester break in the middle. Yeah, right. Okay. So the um, experiment you've done using PebblePad is fresh, hot off the press. Yes. Yeah, and you're, you're yeah. giving us your impressions from yeah. that. Yeah. So so what happened was really last year uh, in the department, and I guess I identified myself particularly. My colleagues may mm. not like to identify themselves in this way, but. Um, I think we felt that really our use of web-based learning tools mm. was non-existent fundamentally, other than obviously using systems like the learning management system, which yeah, is Moodle. Files and yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we all our subjects have a Moodle, and we use those quite a well. We use them. I was going to say quite effectively, we, but we use them. Right. But we're not using, haven't been using any other tools. Okay. And we felt that. Um, Rather than undertaking, you know, one staff member goes off and spends, uh, does a major project on developing, a, you know, a learning tool or one particular um, use of one one project, that yeah. it, that we should, as a department, try to engage as many staff as possible mm -hmm. and begin thinking about how we might to, um, present some of our curriculum using web-based learning tools. So that was the, the the beginning premise. And in that beginning premise, what can you recall what you meant by web-based learning tools? A lot of people in, in the faculty or university sectors generally would hear that and think we do, we use Moodle. Yeah. There it's done. So why are you making a distinct di um, distinction between Moodle uh, and web-based tools? Yes. Well, we probably, I mean, in hindsight, we possibly weren't aware as as aware as we could have been of the range of ways we could use Moodle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think uh, for a number of us were involved in a webinar from the, our discipline, mm -hmm. uh, educators in our discipline talking about the use of social media yep. uh, and that opened the door on a huge, you know, blogs, wikis, yep. um, YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> uh, we were thinking about, we were also thinking about just our, our skills in videoing ourselves, videoing content in classes mm -hmm. and videoing presentations and using those things. So um, I guess Moodle just seemed one small thing in this huge array of potential. Of the web. Of okay. the web. So yeah. you're interested in integrating all of that stuff that's on the web yes. into Moodle or whatever you're Yes, your that's platform. correct. That's, that's correct. Okay. So out of that though, you chose Pebble Pad. Yes. One 
one small thing, yes. you know, web thing. Yes. Why did you, out of that premise then? Go with Pebble Pad. Um, it was, I mean, there were a number of factors. We were, there was a bit of a time urgency to yep. come up with something. There always is. Um, we had another staff member here, Tracy Fortune, was, de was using Pebble Pad in uh, another subject. Getting students to record a, a web folio, a web page, not a web folio, a folio page about their occupations, and so that was starting there. Mm -hmm. We knew that Pebble Pad was well supported by the university mm -hmm. in terms of support for us mm -hmm. uh, and support for students. Although interestingly, students I think found it hard to to find or to use that support. Yeah, um, and we particularly wanted, and, I, and in reflection I'm not sure that Pebble Pad was the best resource for doing this, but we wanted students to be able to create resources and share them amongst themselves and we mm -hmm. thought that, that Pebble Pad offered that. Um, and additionally our students in Bendigo had used Pebble Pad in the year before, so it was a little okay. bit like Pebble Pad was running along in the background. And was already being used or, at some point. Yeah, or some and we thought, got to get going. What can we do? We don't, you know, I just said, personally, my knowledge of all the tools was very limited. Mm -hmm. My personal use of them is limited, mm -hmm. growing slowly, but so it was, it was, let's go with this. And there was yep. some interest amongst staff, several staff members, and that was also part of the idea to capture yeah. more than one person. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, you mentioned a couple of things. One thing stuck in my mind is part of the intent was to have students create uh, web pages that you were calling folios um, so that they could see each other's work. Now, that is possible in Pebble Pad, so why was that not so evident in, in the... Uh, no, it is possible, and no, I think that's been issues with the way we've actually set up the assignments yeah, in okay. Pebble Pad. So it's not and so much Pebble Pad didn't... No, no, no. Yeah. And okay. there's been some timing issues, so... I, th I don't think we really were aware at the beginning of how long it would take us to think through some of these things. Mm -hmm. and I, think, I think most people aren't aware no. of that. Yeah. Uh, so what's happened now is the students have actually across the year, and not just in my subject but in some other subjects, they have created three separate pebble pad um, resources. Yeah. And of those, um, two of them are going to be, we've created another web Pebble Pad site where we're saving resources and they will be open access okay. to the students to use. As examples of good work. Yes, as examples of good work. And our students in their next year go out and spend uh, 16 weeks on placements working in clinical facilities full time. Wow. So these are resources that we feel that they sh may find useful. There you go. This is what I'm worried about. Time. Here we are again for part three after our <laughs> second <one. laughs> rude, inter rude interruption. It was, it was probably cut off because I started raving on about something. But over to you, Anne. You wanted to give oh, us the, a final the, point. The, the final point I wanted to make was that I feel like the next step, apart from us as a department thinking about which systems we might use, in, in so that's a, that's a bigger picture issue. But I think personally. I would like to work with a group of colleagues and at, at a, um, have a project where we look at increasing our own our own knowledge mm -hmm. of web resources. So that I might use personally, yep. personally and professionally. Yeah, uh, that's because, good. I because people like that. I want to do, <laughs> and I really think it's you know it's got potential for us to write a case study and yeah. uh, because yeah. I I think there's nothing like. If I learn how to use them effectively for myself professionally, mm. it will become much clearer to me what choices there are that I can use educationally. So why, that's what I think it's Why is what is You can help me find these people yeah. around the faculty out there yeah. looking for a while. Okay, uh, thanks very much, Anne, for telling us about Pelham and being so frank and open about your, your experiences with that and where you'd like to go with that. So hopefully... Pleasure. Um, there's not much time to watch this video before the panel, but obviously after the panel and Anne will be joining the panel on Web Integrated Learning uh, to be speaking about this again and in a live audience setting. See you then. Thanks, Lee.